Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Rock after we watched IU lose to Iowa today. 45-24, their fifth loss in a row. They're 1-7 on the season now. Um, Trey Roberson got his first start today. That's probably the most significant thing that comes out from today after Gunnar Keel decommitted yesterday. So it looks like Roberson's the QB of the future. He played pretty well. 16-24, um, threw a touchdown pass, ran for... Um, Another, what, 82 yards. So pretty good production out of him. Um, Edward Wright Baker didn't play. DeMarlo Belcher didn't play. Will Maddy didn't play. So some, some new guys on offense, almost like the youth movement going for the future. Lawrence Barnett didn't play on defense. So you're getting some younger guys rotated in. But again, the theme that it always comes back to is the big plays on defense. IU gave up a bunch of them again today. A few of them to Marvin McNutt, the star receiver for Iowa, and Iowa just ran away with it after it was 14 all pretty early on. So, alongside Connor O'Gara, who's filling in for Max McCombs this week, and Alex McCarthy as always, guys, your thoughts on today? Uh, yeah, like like you talked about, Trey Roberson uh, definitely looked looked pretty good today, better than I think we've seen him look this year. He looked comfortable. He looked like he was, um, you know, in control of the offense a little bit. He was actually the leading rusher, I think. He was the leading rusher and leading passer. So, um, you know, he looked good in a, a couple facets of his game. And then, you know, just like, just like last week, we just saw the defense just really break down a number of times. Um, last week, or this week, uh, co-defensive coordinator Mike Eckler said that he thought the defense was making progress, and then they took a step back against, against Wisconsin. And it, uh, from what we saw here, it doesn't look like they're... Um, you know, they're still struggling to kind of step forward at all on defense. Yeah, I mean, going back to Roberson, I was really impressed with the way he handled his third down situations. I thought for a young quarterback coming into a hostile environment like this, it was really impressive to see the way where he stayed calm in the pocket when he needed to and when coverage broke down and, you know, there was nobody open, he was able to use his legs and scramble for a first down. So I think you look at a few things like that and you look at his ability to understand the offense and go through his reads really well. You saw a lot of very good signs for a young quarterback and one that is obviously going to need to be a huge part of this team's future if they want a future. Yeah, Stephen Houston, the running back, had another nice game, 74 yards and a touchdown. The offense, really, I thought, outside of the Virginia game this year, probably the best it's looked for a full game at any time this season. I mean, that second half against Virginia, they really clicked on all cylinders and got back and took the lead in that one. But I mean, this was really a complete game. IU had almost 400 yards of offense. Roberson looked really, really calm out there, as these guys have mentioned. And so that was good to see in an in environment on the road. Maybe he knows now that he's going to be the starter, nobody over his shoulder, and nobody looking – or nobody going to be over his shoulder next year either with Keel decommitting. So um, – but the big plays, guys, is there any solution for these? I mean, it looked like sometimes they wanted to blitz and they just couldn't get there, and so the guys got beat. Other times it was just um, mistakes on coverage, guys getting beat on coverage, guys not going for the ball. I mean, is there any solution for this, or is it just a talent issue with IU? I mean, if there is a solution to it, IU still, it's it's been a persistent issue all year long, and they still haven't been able to find that solution. I mean, you know, go back going back to the first couple of games, they, they've had problems giving up plays of, you know, 40, 50, 60, today 80 on 80-yard 80 uh, touchdown pass, and I mean, may, there are some things you can do. I remember one time in this game, um, the linebackers just didn't disguise their blitz whatsoever, and they came, and uh, the Hawkeye quarterback was able to sneak out, and the whole middle of the field was open, and he ran for 20, 25 yards. So they can, you know, they can do little things like that. They can work on disguising their blitzes, on um, trying some new little things like that, you know, and trying not to be too vulnerable, but... I mean, there's there's got to be a solution, and I don't know I don't know where it is, and it doesn't look like uh, the IU defense has really figured out that solution yet, um, and I'm sure they'll keep working on it in practice. It's, I mean, it's tough because you talk about being able to disguise a blitz and being able to throw different looks at a team, and obviously you want to do that, but you have situations like Greg Heben just getting beat off the ball by Marvin McNutt throughout this day, and really, I mean, that's that's more of a situation where you know what, the other team is just more talented than you. And 
Heben might slip here and there, or, you know, you know, McNutt might be able to go up and grab one over him, and situations like that happen because IU simply does not have talent on defense right now. They do not have talented defensive playmakers that are capable of breaking up passes and capable of shutting down big-time receivers like McNutt. And until you bring in some defensive playmakers and guys that really know how to kill an offensive's, an offense's momentum, you're not going to see any results from this defense. And, you know, today we saw Iowa just pretty much had their way with IU. Well, you, Alex mentioned Coach Eckler earlier in the week talking about how the defense had made strides. And you saw that against Penn State early in Big Ten play. They gave up 16 points. Since then going into or all the way up to halftime of today's game. They had given up 135 points in 10 quarters, which is two and a half games with a little over 50 points a game on average. So that's obviously not going to do it. I mean, no matter how good your offense plays, IU's offense obviously can't put up those numbers with some of these other Big Ten teams. So the defense is going to have to get off the field, going to have to be opportunistic, and they haven't created any turnovers in the last two weeks. And, I mean, when you can't stop anybody and you're not going to create any turnovers, you're not going to win any games. And that's why you find your team right now at 1-7. and seven. So, guys, going forward, obviously Northwestern next week. It's not going to get any easier. Jeremy <laughs> Ebert's one of the best possession receivers in the Big Ten. He's not going to really beat you down the field as often as some of these other guys have in recent weeks. But he's going to put up a lot of numbers on you if you're not careful. So, what do you guys take out of this game, and what do you what do you see going forward? Well, um, I know you've mentioned a couple times this year that IU just doesn't have that spark on the road that they have at home. So next week it's going to be homecoming. Um, you know, IU's going to be playing back at Memorial Stadium, and hopefully, the you know, hopefully for IU they can uh, kind of play off the energy of the crowd. You know, however large the crowd is. It's unfair um, to call it large, though, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> right. Uh, whatever energy there will be there, we'll see if they can play off that. We'll see if they can create their own energy kind of being at home. Um, but, again, they'll be, they'll be a little bit overmatched. They, uh, you know, at least on defense, they definitely will be. Uh, like you said, um, Jeremy Ebert, Dan Persa, a couple of those guys on offense um, are going to give the IU defense some fits. And I'm sure I'm sure they'll – Sure, they'll be working this week on trying to make those adjustments, trying to cut down on those big plays. Um, but you know, like I said earlier, if it hasn't, you know, if it hasn't been changed in the first eight weeks, you know, how much more can they really do with the rest of the season? I think Dan Purse is going to be able to pretty much do what he wants against the IE defense. We've seen it in the past from him last year. He is just. You think you have him down, and then he's able to scramble, get away, and throw a ball 30 yards downfield, and that's just kind of the playmaker he is. He is exactly what this IU defense cannot stop right now, and that is a quarterback that can make plays inside the pocket, outside of the pocket, and is not necessarily a, uh, a guy that's affected very much by, by a front four, which might be IU's defensive strength right now, if you could really call it that. So I see this as being a game where, you know what, if IU doesn't get a a lead early, you're going to lose the support of the of the fans, even though it is homecoming. I mean, you, you just got to hope if you're IU that you're able to get a lead early, maybe a two touchdown lead, and somehow ride off the the support of the fans. Otherwise, it's going to get ugly quick for them. It should be interesting. Should be interesting to see if fans continue to come out and support this team. I mean, they haven't really this year, but now they're not bowl eligible. Not, not many people thought they would be, but they're one in seven. Going to the next week, another loss. But for Connor O'Gara, Alex McCarthy, I'm Justin Albers. Take care, guys.